you guys, time for another Tomes of Terror, where I review books, horror books. But today, we have something a little bit different. Not all that different, but a little bit different. This is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a whodunit, but it's actually a whodunit with a difference. It's almost kind of like a classic whodunit wrapped in a modern day thriller whodunit, like a turducken of whodunit, if you will. But yeah, this was a really, really, really good book. I'm going to just say like right at the outset. Now, this was a huge bestseller. It came out in 2017. Uh, New York Times bestseller, LA, uh, whatever, the Review of Books bestseller. It was on like a whole bunch of like end of year, like uh, best books list, NPR, and a bunch of other uh, things. And I just found out, uh, it was announced just a couple months ago that they're making in the UK, they're making a six part series of this book that's going to air. I don't know where it's going to air, but it's going to air somewhere in the UK because the writer is British. Now, the writer of this book, Anthony Horowitz, He's actually the guy that did Midsummer Murders uh, on UK TV and also Foil's War, I believe. Um, he's also written a couple of like Sherlock Holmes novels. I think it was one called Moriarty and uh, there was one called, I can't remember what the other one was called, something Silk in it. But I think this was actually his first like whodunit like in novel form. And um, he wanted, he said he wanted to do something a little bit different with the genre, but it's not so different that it's like, it's cool because it's kind of like you get the best of both worlds. Like you kind of get like a classic Agatha Christie style murder mystery in the middle part, like as the Oreo filling. And then around the outside, you have like a more contemporary sort of murder mystery or like an investigation kind of centered around the publishing industry. So basically what happens in this book you start out at the very beginning, and the book is told from the point of view of Susan Ryland, who is an editor at a, a place called Cloverleaf Books in London. And their main author is this guy named Alan Conway. And Alan Conway has been writing these novels about a German investigator named Atticus Pund, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce like the umlaut kind of thing. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that totally wrong. But uh, yeah, so he's had like a really successful series of um, whodunits like with this investigator and they're very like Agatha Christie style, like old school type murder mysteries. So at the very beginning of the book, uh, they have received Alan Conway's latest book, which is called Magpie Murders. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything in any of these reviews, but um, I do have to like go into some plot points that, you know, just to talk about the book. So if you really don't want to know anything about anything like about this book, other than maybe like the barest description, then, you know, maybe go read it first and then come back and we'll talk about it a little bit. Because I don't want to like accidentally spoil something that's going to ruin it for people. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know. So basically, there's like a little bit of an introduction with Susan Ryland where she kind of talks about her life. She talks a little bit about Alan Conway, about her job and everything like that at this publishing company. And then pretty much the next, that's just like a few pages. And then pretty much the next 200 pages is the bulk of the manuscript for the mag for Magpie Murders, which is the book which is written by Alan Conway. So it's like a book within a book. Now, this part of the story is a fictional tale of uh, Atticus Pund, the uh, investigator, going to this little town in Somerset in the 1950s, investigating, well, there's one death that happens. There's like this old, this older lady who falls down the stairs. And even though it looks like an accident, um, enough people in town think that it might be a murder that someone in the town like goes to London to like enlist his help in the investigation. And at first he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't really think there's anything for him. Uh, you find out that Atticus Pund, the character, is dying because I guess Alan Conway didn't want to write any more books about him. So he's killing the character off at the end of this book. This is going to be his last one. But then it so happens that uh, a few days after this woman's supposedly accidental death where she falls down the stairs at this big manor house, um, the owner of the same manor house is unquestionably murdered. And so then Atticus decides that he's going to go and investigate. So those 200 pages, like after the very brief introduction, is pretty much just a straightforward 
old school Agatha Christie style 50s murder mystery where he's like trying to figure out there's like all this is really small town. There's all this kind of intrigue about like the people that live at the manor house and there's everybody's got secrets and there's like, you know, all these red herrings and all these suspects. Everybody has a reason for killing her. Everybody has a reason for killing him. It's like, you know, this big, this big thing. So then you get through about 200 pages of this and then it just abruptly stops. Now you find out that what ended up happening was that Alan Conway, who wrote this book, had sent the manuscript to the publisher, but the last few chapters in which he reveals who the murderer was in his fictional book are missing. So after that point, we go back with Susan Ryland, who we're introduced to at the beginning of the book, and she's basically conducting an investigation. Well, at first, she's conducting an investigation trying to find the last few chapters of this book because this guy, this is like a smaller publishing company. Alan Conway um, is their best-selling author, even though no one really likes him because he's really cranky and difficult. But he's their best-selling author. They need this book you know, to keep their uh, business afloat. And they have no idea like where these pages might have gone. Now, it turns out that a couple days after the manuscript arrives at the publisher with supposedly the last few chapters missing, Alan Conway himself turns up dead in a way that could be an accident, could be suicide, also could be murder. So the editor, while she started out like looking for the last chapters of Magpie Murders, this book that, you know, they need to publish, she finds herself kind of getting more sucked into maybe this guy got murdered. And so she's um, like conducting an investigation of her own. So it's really kind of cool how the contemporary mystery with the publisher and the, or the publishing house and the editor and the author of this book within a book that he turns up dead and her like kind of going through an investigation, but in a more contemporary fashion, kind of sort of parallels the, the fictional story that's, uh, that's been told in the manuscript magpie murders. So this book was delightful. It was just like, it's, it seems long. Like, I guess when I first got it, I was like, you know, I, I was like, wow, that'll take me like quite a while to read. Not really. Cause I read pretty fast, but, um, it's the longest one that I've reviewed on the show so far, but it did not take me that long to read it whatsoever, just because it was so engaging and it was so fun and it was just so I mean I like whodunits it's not like my main genre I haven't read a shit ton of them like I've read some Agatha Christie I've read some Sherlock Holmes I've read some of the older stuff and I do like some of those British style whodunits like even on TV and everything which this kind of resembles in part which is not surprising because Anthony Horowitz uh wrote Midsummer Murders or he um you know created Midsummer Murders and that's uh his main thing is writing whodunits for TV but it's just the the way that the, this plays with the genre in a way that's not, it's not making fun of the genre. It's like, it's a, an affectionate love letter to the genre, but it does something different with it. Like in the way that you just have this kind of old school one and a news and they're kind of like bouncing off each other and they're parallel of each other. And I really, really like the way that was done. This is definitely one book that, that I will probably need to reread at some point because I feel like there were so many clues in there that I missed out on, you know what I mean? And when, when it comes to the end and you figure out, you know, who, who done it, you know, when you figure that out at the end, it does, it is very satisfying and everything makes sense. And like, then you remember, oh yeah, he said this and this happened with this. So everything does make sense. And he really did, did seem to take great pains to like construct it in such a way that, that the clues all add up, that there were so many people that could have done it. But when you get to the end, you're like, oh, well, that's the only possible way it could have happened. So it's like really, really well done in that way. The only thing that I will, and this is not a criticism for my part, because this did not really bother me. But if you don't know going in that it's essentially like a fictional murder inside a real murder, like in the universe of the book. So when you, so you spent like 200 pages getting really involved in this old like murder that took place in the 1950s, like in the manuscript, and then to have it stop like right before the end, like right before the killer is revealed. And then there's all this other stuff, you know, cause you know, there's like still half of the book left to go. So if you're not sure that that's what you're getting into, then it can seem kind of jarring because you'll get to the end. You'll be like, oh shit, 
You know what I mean? Now, now what? But in a way, I liked that because it paralleled, you know, the narrator, Susan Ryland, the editor, it paralleled her experience. I mean, she got this manuscript. She's reading it over the weekend. She's like, you know, this is going to be our next big book. And then the last few chapters are gone. And she's like, oh, shit, now what do I do? So now she has to, like, take up the mantle, I guess, and like go. And, you know, you do get to... They wouldn't leave you hanging. Like, he wouldn't leave you hanging like that because I'm saying that he's not going to leave it hanging. Is he, like, not resolve the mystery or they're never going to find the pages or anything? I mean, you do find out, like, what happens and everything. But like I said, everything ties up very nicely. Everything is very, very well paralleled, like, between the fictional novel and the real one. And it's just really, really well done. I can see why this was such a bestseller, why it was on so many uh, best books lists of uh, 2017. And I can definitely see why it's going to be made into a series. I don't know when that's going to be out. Um, The article that I saw was from July 21st of 2020. And uh, they had just come out and announced that they were going to do a six part series based on this book, um, which I'm sure will be really entertaining because the book was like really, really entertaining. So if you really if you love murder mysteries, even new ones, old ones, whatever. This kind of has something for everybody. And it's just so cleverly done. And it's just really fun. It's a fun read. It's not super heavy. It's not super gory. It's not graphic too much or anything like that. It's like a classic mystery and a modern mystery, like all wrapped up in one. So it's just like, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, so I would definitely recommend it if uh, that sounds like something that you would like. And uh, so that'll do it for this review. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.